Hi, it's Jeff. And Denise from MouseSteps.com. And this is episode number 295. 295. Of Mouse Steps Weekly. Sponsored by MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. We're entering a new year with a lot of options for Disney trips from the Epcot Festival of the Arts, which is coming up, I believe, on the 18th, which is just a few weeks away now, to the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival. We have Star Wars Land on both coasts. There's a lot to look forward to this year. So if you're looking to book a trip anytime in 2019, I can't believe it's already almost 2019, check out MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel and they can do Universal and pretty much anywhere else you want to go. And don't forget to sign up for their newsletter, 20 Years in Business, MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. And one place that they can book you into is Disney's Wilderness Lodge, which is what we're going to talk about. That's our first segment. And we were here for the storybook dining uh, at Artist Point with Snow White, but right now we're looking at some of the Christmas. And this is my favorite, probably Christmas resort. It is beautiful. There are three fireplaces, at least in the main resort, that you can kind of uh, sit by and relax. But uh, as you said, the main reason of uh, coming here was the storybook dining at Artist Point. And here is the little check-in booth. Right now, this is later in the night, so there's nobody in the way. But this is where you're going to go to check in. And it was really hard to find. I mean, a lot of guests were kind of not sure where to go because once somebody's standing in front of it, you don't know it's check-in, but that's where it is. And here is uh, here is artist coming into Artist Point. We were told when we arrived that Dopey would not be there. So it took us quite some time to try to figure out where we were going to eat instead of Artist Point, which we chose like McDonald's. But in the end, we waited so long to figure it out that all of a sudden Dopey appeared. Yes, I, had, I went back and asked if, if there's a phone number I can call to make sure Dopey has got off of work in the mine. They because said he that's was working in the said. mine. And they said, well, good news for you. He's here. So uh, everything worked out. Here is the seating arrangement. Very, very nice. Uh, a very good start to this. I like that they have the little uh, apple there. And the apple, when you turn it over, it's actually an autographed card, autograph card, pre-autographed by uh, all the four characters you'll see. Right. And that's who you should see. We were told um, by somebody on Twitter that Grumpy had not been there one of the evening uh, evenings. So that is the four that you should see. Uh, sometimes you might not see one of them. So here is the menu. Now, this is the cocktail, the only cocktails we saw. That's the only cocktail page that we had. Um, but there's apparently another page that has so many cocktails. And beers and, and wines beers, yeah. and all this. We missed all this. Well, yeah, we didn't get that. So this is what we saw. Made it easy to choose, though. It did. I mean, you have three choices. And then I had some unsweet and iced tea. So here are the entrees. Um, they give you the appetizers and they give you the desserts. Uh, beginning and end, and then you get to choose an entree. So we had a great seat right where the characters came out, and the first character to come out was Snow White herself. And as each character is introduced, there is special music. So there was Snow White music here, and she comes and does a little dance and walks around the restaurant to make her arrival. And the uh, because it's Christmas, you have all these wreaths up, so it looks even nicer. I hope they will have something else during you know it would be nice if they had something similar during the year because it was just so beautiful um but where we were i thought was very the very best location where again where they come out where they go back so you will always see them and when they're announced, I mean, they were right there. So you hear the announcement and there they were. And here is Snow White herself. And she gave us a great interaction. She's telling us all about her famous gooseberry pie. And the, you know what? We had gooseberry pie. Yes. And we're going to talk about that. That was good. I've never had it before. Um, and while we're looking at this, I just want to mention that the right now it's $55 plus tax and tip for adults, 33 for children plus tax and tip. But just one dining entitlement uh, table service on the dining plan, which is actually, to me, a very good value. Very good, yeah. We did get a 10% pass holder discount, um, and I thought that was that was pretty pretty nice. Right, and I think that was on the food only that didn't include yes. the, the alcohol. Right. I mean, Tables in Wonderland, if you had that, would in, I don't know that that's included on this one, but you would get it on both the alcohol and the food. Well, speaking of uh, the alcoholic drinks, here is the very first drink, the Evil to the Core. And this has silver tequila, habanero, blackberry, and orange juice. And the habanero, I mean, that should make it spicy, but I didn't find it really that spicy, maybe just mildly. But it was actually a fairly sweet drink, and I, I liked it. So, um, And I thought it was a pretty decent-sized drink as well. And you 
also got the Enchanted Apple, uh, because we only saw, again, three drinks right. on the whole menu, uh, with vodka, sour apple, white cranberry juice. And there's a little slice of apple, and at the very end, after it had soaked in all the uh, all the drink, it was good to, it was very nice to eat that. I thought it was a great, very, very good and strong drink. Well, I thought they were both pretty strong drinks, so um, they were, I thought they were very nice. Uh, now, here are the appetizers. They called them shared appetizers, so I don't really think of it as much as shared because there's like two and then two. You know, there's one for each of us on almost everything. Right, and there are two shrimps in the little shrimp bowl, so everybody got one of everything in this case. Right, it's not like you have like three for two people or something. So anyway, um, th those were the appetizers, and there is Dopey. Um, you like the shrimp appetizer. And we're going to talk a little bit more about all that, but, but right when I was recording the appetizers, Dopey comes running by, and I wanted to illustrate that. You you never know if you're going to have any any time to do anything because all of a sudden a character could come out, and this was a big dance number, so uh, you know it, the, everybody kind of pays attention to Dopey over there. And I was just going to say, I mean, it's really it's really a fun atmosphere. I didn't feel rushed at all. I didn't, you know, like I had read that some people felt rushed on the first day, but I didn't notice anybody feeling rushed around us. Yeah, zero rush. As a matter of fact, I think we had more than enough time for everything. Very, very relaxed, and we needed some relaxation. We went the day after Christmas, so after all the Christmas craziness, this was such a great experience. Right, and there is Dopey, who we thought wouldn't even be here. I told him I was so happy he got <laughs> off work in the mine. It was so good to see him, and uh, you know, they were so nice to us. They they were apologetic that uh, you know he was going to maybe not be there at first, so it, it really worked out great. And I, I think he may have shown up a little bit late, but in the end, most guests were able to see him as well as all the other characters, including the Evil Queen, who we'll see later. And he is looking at all the appetizers, and there is the shrimp. And I could mention, again, uh, there are two giant jumbo shrimps, and luckily for me, you aren't a big shrimp fan. I thought that was the highlight for me. That was the best part of all the appetizers. Oh, and here is uh, the shrimp appetizer. Um, and again, you said this was the best one. I don't eat, I don't eat any seafood. Um, so this has soy, miso, avocado, Thai chili, and greens. And here's Dopey. Okay, Dopey Grumpy, while we're, after we're talking about shrimp, Dopey Grumpy and Snow White are the ones who will come to the table. Evil Queen does not come to the table. So we were told when we should go see her. And this was the first appearance by Grumpy uh, for us. Now uh, you had seen Dopey and Grumpy both come out of the back. And at that point they were playing uh, Hi Ho Hi Ho. And then uh, it started going into Whistle While You Work and even Snow White joined in. And again, this is another one of the little numbers they do. I would say every 20 minutes or so. Uh, yeah, I guess about, about that. And also you can see there's this really nice lighting above, which is new. Uh, you had the veal shank. Which was so, so good. I was so glad I got this. Amazingly tender. No need for any kind of knife at all. Great flavor. And uh, also the veggies and the uh, the potato, the mashed potato and the sauce. Everything was great. I, uh, I quite enjoyed that. And I think while you're t looking at this, we didn't talk about the winter squash bisque and the hunter's pie, which also were pretty nice uh, appetizers. Very good. I, I liked everything, actually. Um, for my entree, I had the chicken. And this is the Brothers Grimm Roasted Chicken with Confit potatoes, roasted Brussels sprouts, apples, and chestnut butter. I thought it was really nice. You ate about half of it. Um, even though the appetizers... The next day. Let's, uh... Yes, the next day. Uh, the appetizers, I mean, they're very... They're, rel they're small. Um, but for whatever reason, I mean, I was able... This is actually a pretty good size entree. So I had half... Um, I had my potatoes and the Brussels sprouts, so very good. Um, so I definitely recommend this. And I did not go home hungry by any means, but that said, I wouldn't have minded some bread with uh, the meal. I would have liked, I, you know what, I would have liked that as well. I think for kids, they get some kind of a vegetable and bread little platter. And I think instead of one of the appetizers that we had, I would have liked that. So here is Grumpy doing his little meet and greet with us. And of course, I had to ask him about my bucket of diamonds. And he remembered me from uh, all the parties. And he said he works very, very hard and no diamonds for me. I didn't hear him say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's all in my head. I think that exactly is where it is. No more diamonds. <laughs> but you took some nice pictures. And again, we had plenty of time with Grumpy. And so Grumpy and uh, Dopey are leaving for now. 
now, and uh, I think it's almost time for the yummiest part of all, the desserts. And I will say Grumpy was appropriately grumpy. Um, <laughs> so these are the desserts. Again, they call them shared, but it's one each, one each. Um, and this is the gooseberry pie, which I thought was actually very good. I, I don't even know that much anything about I don't know anything berry. about it either except for I liked it it and, was very good and it comes with a meringue and that was a, a really nice option um, they also have this they call it the poison apple with white chocolate apple mousse and a sour center I didn't really find the center that sour because um, when I ate them I don't like sour so and I, I didn't it find nice. it at all sour either which was a surprising and this is the miners treasures which is like a sponge cake chocolate gems buttercream icing. It's sort of like a little, it reminds me of a little cupcake in a jar. Um, so that's what it reminds me of. And I thought that was very nice yeah, as well. Yeah, all of them. And there you go. I mean, if you put them all together, it's really, you can see it's not a huge amount. It's one nice dessert. I would say my favorite of all though was, believe it or not, the gooseberry pie. Yeah. I mean, you know what? I looked up gooseberry and I still, it, it's some sort of a berry that I don't think I've ever had. And I thought it was very nice. Now here is the Evil Queen who we saw going in and out every so often um, near us. And it was time, is it time to be summoned by her? It is just <laughs> about, you know, as they said, every hero or every, yeah, every story must have a villain. And you could see Snow White looking on. But to meet her, you actually have to walk to the middle of the restaurant. And there's a photo pass photographer there. And there she is. And she has plenty of time. Trust me, there's plenty of time to interact with her because uh, it's it's just not at all a, a rushed or crowded experience. And um, so ahead of time, I had heard maybe the Territory Lounge would be used for the Evil Queen, but it's not. It's in the middle of Artist Point. And I thought she was she was really fun. It, it's a nice backdrop. Uh, we had pictures taken with her, and we took pictures of her. There was, it, like Jeff said, it, it was plenty of time. I would not want to be in the seats around this though, because there's always guests and interaction. Not that there's lines or anything, but at one point there were kids kind of, uh, you know, running around that area uh, because you know they're excited to see the queen. So if you're eating right there, right next to this, it could be a distraction. Well, I, I don't think it was. It didn't seem too bad when I walked through. I mean, I thought ours was the best area. But there was also, you know, characters coming in and out. And some guests would pro may prefer to be a little bit into the restaurant. But and I like that area. And there she goes. And she said she, that uh, I will miss her, she said. You Is that what she said? Time. Yes. And this was really interesting, the presentation of this bonus dessert here. So this is a hunter's gift to the queen. And it's got uh, cracked maple crackled maple popcorn and a ganache hearts and these are really nicely presented and she's got gloves on and everything but dry you know, ice there's some kind of smoke in the box as well but when you think about the story it, you know it's probably not what you'd necessarily expect as your dessert um, but the hearts were very they were actually really good chocolate well it's perfect either before or right after seeing the evil queen you know i think it's a it's a, a very good setup or ending to the evening so essentially you've got four small desserts to enjoy after after your entree um, and all of them, I thought, were very nice. And here is the final page of the menu, which is the end. And time for us to give our summary. I thought it was excellent. I would I would really like to go back and try some of the other uh, options. It's uh, it's probably my favorite character experience at Walt Disney World. Oh, and by the way, we're looking at, they actually have gifts. They have Snow White themed uh, gift items in the store and in a little cart outside of the restaurant. In case you want to purchase anything. And it might be the most unique of the, uh, the character meals at Walt Disney World. You can't really meet the dwarves too often. And certainly not the Evil Queen and yes to Snow White, but to really have them all there, as long as they're all there, is really, uh, it's a really nice, the food is good, the character inter interaction was great, our service was great. I mean, it oh, really yes. was excellent, a nice... Excellent service and, and great presentation. Let's not forget the presentation and just the inside, the decorations, especially now at Christmas time. Uh, I can't can't think you can beat it for a character meal right so um yeah i thought it was very nice i know that there's uh those of you who i haven't been to artist point in forever um who might have really enjoyed artist point as a signature dining location um but there'll be others who really enjoy it as a character meal i thought it was i thought it was a very good experience and um one definitely to check out so now it is Christmas Eve Eve, and because we had family staying at uh, Disney's Grand Floridian, we spent a lot of time uh, in this area, and uh, this was, again, Christmas Eve Eve, and we were able to see Stitch and Lilo. And we didn't see too many characters. We didn't meet a lot of characters this year for the holidays. 
um, but we did meet a handful. And uh, Lilo and Stitch, they did not meet together at Disney's Polynesian Resort, but you did catch them together as they were swapping off. And, uh, and there goes Stitch as Lilo is hanging out for a little bit. Um, so it's really, I, I really like Disney's Polynesian Resort as well. I mean, each resort has a kind of a special flavor to it, especially for the holidays. Um, and Lilo is in a special dress just as uh, Stitch has his Hawaiian shirt on, his kind of a Christmas poinsettia. Uh, poinsettia. Well, I guess Stitch was being naughty, so Lilo says no presents under the tree for Stitch. But it was it was really an excellent interaction. I mean, uh, they were they were really going above and beyond with us, and and that's what I like about some of these special holiday meet and greets. Now there weren't a lot of people here, so that's why I think we were able to have a lot more time. Sometimes like at the Grand Floridian, which we'll see after on Christmas Eve, it was packed, so you can't expect to have that kind of uh, time with the characters. Well, not only that. But we didn't even stay in line for the ones at the Grand just because it could take maybe an hour to an hour and a half to, to meet them. Um, so with Lilo, we waited probably about 10 minutes. It wasn't it wasn't too bad. Uh, you I know you made up a lot of stuff that she said about Stitch. I did not hear that. <laughs> oh, that's not made up. That, that is uh, interpreted by the uh, PhotoPass photographer. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now it is Christmas Eve. Our tradition every year is to go to Disney's Fort Wilderness and especially to see the Fort Wilderness Christmas Parade. And this year it is led by, of course, uh, Chip and Dale. And there are three uh, different... Uh, golf cart parades during the year and the golf carts are mostly guests with a handful of carts that are from cast members now if you're going to see one during the year halloween is the biggest although fourth of july kind of rivals it too and i hadn't re realized that till like a couple of years ago christmas is generally a little smaller um, it's very festive and that's something that I really enjoy about it. This I have not seen that before. That is a very interesting <laughs> golf cart, I tell you that. Uh, one of the old-fashioned bikes. And here we have a uh, gingerbread house. Right. It's The uh, carts during this, it wasn't as much IP-based. This is really fun. As it is very Christmas-themed. You do have prep and landing right here. and uh, Very energetic elf. <laughs> a tall elf, too, uh, by that matter. And I really, uh, it, this started early at 3.30 p.m., which is very early for a golf cart parade. We also went to Trails End, so I'm just mentioning that. This is an up an up cart, and uh, we've seen many up uh, golf carts through the years. Yeah, it was so nice. We have really good memories of some of the other up carts. And this is a, another a continuation. It seems every parade this year has a vehicle that would be at Walt Disney World. We've seen the boat, we've seen other transportation, and we have the trolley uh, in this Christmas one. And I think this was my favorite of all the golf carts. I thought that was a lot of fun. And here is the fairy godmother. And then we have another gingerbread type. And this is one I think uh, they follow me on Instagram, and I believe they won. Uh, oh, with the little gingies in yes, the back. Yes, I, that was I pretty believe cool. they won one of the one of the prizes. A lot of gingerbread. Gingerbread was the theme of the parade this year for sure. And it's funny because every year, no matter which of the golf cart parades you go to see, there is some sort of a, 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 theme, a theme that takes yeah. over, like Star Wars one year, and you just never know what it'll be. And uh, then we walked around and we saw Heather and Megan. Yes, a um, shout out to them. Always great to see them in the family. Yes, and we'll probably see them again uh, before January 6th. And here is, this is a campsite. <laughs> Unbelievable. We didn't have as much time as usual to go see campsites, but there are some really terrific ones. So hopefully we're going to go to the Backyard Barbecue on yes, January 31st. Yes, just so booked the very last one. I was able to finally, I've been trying for days and I was able to get a reservation. So very excited for that. And here is Santa Claus himself making his uh, first appearance to greet all of his uh, of his fans. <laughs> we didn't, and we didn't wait uh, for him, you just got some uh, video there. We had Trails End calling. We did have Trails End. There's going to be a lot of changes uh, coming to Fort Wilderness and really starting next, this coming year um, as the Backyard Barbecue. Oh, and there's Chip and Dale, and yes. they are meeting. Even though that I, I did not meet Santa, I could not resist meeting Chip and Dale with their holiday scarves and their friend, the snowman, that they were telling me they personally built that. I had a translator, that, <laughs> and sure. that was the photo pass guy there. He was before, able to translate what they were trying to tell me. Be, before I say that they didn't That's actually right. He tell speaks, you anything. He speaks chipmunk 
perfect and fluently. And I and I wasn't there at the time, so I didn't hear well, you it. you were holding down the fort, so to speak, to, for our, our trails and uh, Right. I, I was like, you can go. It's okay if you go meet them. <laughs> um, and there is uh, Pioneer Hall. But there's a lot of changes happening. We will have still hoop de doo review and trails and all of that still open. Um, but there's going to be a DVC, a DVC resort being built for, I believe, 2022. And there are some things that will be not here anymore and maybe backyard barbecue, though they could reopen it at some point. And I've heard a possibility of the stables moving as well. So everything that's behind the hoop de doo area could could be uh, could be moving. Right. Uh, moving or, or disappearing. Going away. Yes. Right. So we don't know. Disney has not announced everything. But there are going to be changes very soon. And here we see some arts and crafts. I guess there is a token fee to uh, participate in that. And they had one time only. They had the movie here. And I think it was Mickey's Christmas Carol. It was really nice to see it right here at the settlement instead of the beach. I like this location a lot better. It's a little brighter as well. Well, what about the normal campfire uh, Well, no, but, but they always have the big party in this area. So, of course, the normal ca campfire area is the best. But uh, That's my favorite area to see the movie. Um, but, you know, this is sort of the hub of everything now mm -hmm. for the different holidays. Uh, I don't want to say everything. There are still some things that happen in the campfire area, but not as much anymore. And here we are at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. Again, one of my favorite resorts for the holidays, especially with the gingerbread. Um, and then Mickey and Minnie were meeting, not together, but separately, which is really the big reason we didn't end up standing and waiting in line. We didn't know who we were going to meet. Well, they said the line was between 45 minutes and an hour, and then it grew while we were deciding mm -hmm. what to do. So uh, we ended up just kind of standing around, and it worked out good because while we were getting pictures, Mickey showed up, and, and they had uh, Minnie and Mickey switch off, and I think they even had a nice little kiss there as they switched. So uh, still, after 90 years, very much in love, those two. Well, we didn't really need to have our pictures with the characters, so instead we kind of stood off to the side and just, and up above, which I really enjoy kind of looking down and everything that's going on. And this is a, a first. Mickey in front of the gingerbread house never happened before. He's always met, they've met in front of the tree. So I think it's a great backdrop having Mickey in front of the gingerbread house. Well, especially since the gingerbread house was moved this year, um, so that it, this is actually a very different location, just a little bit from further from where it used to be, and it makes for a terrific backdrop now. Um, and there is Minnie Mouse again. And um, when we went upstairs, Santa was also meeting, but Santa was meeting in front of the Christmas tree. So I'm going to show a picture in just a second of that. And here is Mickey again, and there is Santa, and then Minnie. I like how you're able to have both. You can mm -hmm. meet the Disney characters and Santa Claus at the same time in a beautiful setting with the band. Now, this is actually Christmas night. We went to the uh, Epcot to, for the Candlelight Processional, which uh, amazingly, we were able to get a seat at the last minute for the final show on Christmas night, which was awesome. But uh, as we we're leaving the park, you notice these really nice character Christmas uh, outfitted characters here in the shop so I wanted to get a little video. Well this is at the International Gateway and I've really enjoyed these windows since they began uh, in November and I always go and I take pictures even though I already have the pictures. I just like that Disney a lot of times recently has really done such a great job with Christmas windows um, and especially the character ones and here at the International Gateway I think it's been more so than ever. We actually didn't go to Epcot specifically for candlelight, except I thought, well, we can take a walk and then we can hear candlelight. But they actually, like we arrived here about 15 minutes at International Gateway, about 15 minutes before the show started and then walked over and then we were able to get a seat, which was crazy. Yeah, you a know, Christmas but... miracle. Christmas night candlelight. How awesome was that? But the one thing about Christmas week is a lot of times Epcot doesn't seem as crowded. And I think it's because the season uh, pass holders and other pass holders, some are not able to get in. So anyway, uh, because you wanted it so much, this was a look at the characters. And we want to say Merry Christmas to everybody. And uh, I look forward to a happy new year. And of course, as you mentioned before, we just were able to snag a last minute ticket to Mickey's Backyard Barbecue, the very last one. So we'll be there for uh, New Year's Eve. Fort Wilderness. Well, probably the last one, unless they decide to add some more and say, oh, well, another year. Just of kidding. <laughs> you never know. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was, it was a really uh, good time for Christmas, especially for Christmas evening. Um, but thanks to our sponsors, MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. We really appreciate their sponsorship. Check them out. 
especially as you're thinking about your travel for 2019, which really, you know, this is such a, every year in January when I was a travel agent, it was like a deluge of calls because it's really time to think about the whole year of travel. Oh, this is the year of Star Wars land. Can you imagine a lot of busyness towards the end of the year next year? Well, not only towards the end of next year, but we're looking at towards mid-year or earlier for uh, California. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to possibly see Star Wars land well before it comes to uh, to Florida, but we'll see. So anyway, check them out. MEI Travel and Rouse Fan Travel. Again, as we had mentioned a couple times, we're pretty excited. Next week, we're going to be able to show uh, the Fort Wilderness Backyard Barbecue, the very last performance. And uh, there'll be some other surprises as well on our next show. Surprises for me, too, because I don't know what we're doing. Well, we talked about it. We, have, uh, <laughs> we still have our room to show from Disney Shopping. Cheyenne Resort at Disneyland Paris, and uh, we have the uh, the new Disney Junior. Uh, what is it? Is it the dance party yeah, show? Yeah, the Disney. Did we not talk about? We that We haven't yet? talked about that oh, yet. Yeah, the Disney Junior dance party is something uh, that just started a couple weeks ago, and we've already posted about that. Um, and then there's a lot more. Sea World. We'll be going to Sea World before next week's show, so we'll show a little bit of that, perhaps. Well, we're going tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then uh, definitely just kind of oh, New Year's Eve. We're mm -hmm. going to be walking around Epcot, I think, a little bit for New Year's Eve. I just I don't know everything we're doing yet, so we'll see. So whatever comes, uh, we will be here again next week. Have a great week, and we'll see you all next week. Have a great week. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year.